Let's go and welcome back everybody to Fruits of the Literature Club. Last episode, Natsuki came over our house and we decided to do a little Netflix and chill. Watched a little Sailor Moon get all cuddly up close and personal the whole nine yards. It was great. Check it out if you want some Natsuki action. But for now, Natsuki's alarm just went off, which signals to her that she has to get back home or else daddy will be mad. So we're going to walk Natsuki home and hopefully everything goes, um, somewhat normally. We just learned that her dad starves her, so that's not great. Um, hopefully we don't absolutely cave his head in when we meet him. But with that being said, let's continue the episode and see what happens. Before long, Natsuki's signature cat meow alarm goes off, indicating that it's time for her to leave. You know, <clears throat> real quickly, and then we're going to get into it, okay? I've never had a custom alarm clock or a custom ringtone. I have always just used the defaults that come with phones. You know, the like the do 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 that like is on every iPhone. That's the alarm, and then my phone is just like well, it's just vibration actually. What's even the ringtone? I don't know. Usually my phone's always on silent. Anyway. Let me know if you've ever had like a, a custom alarm uh sound or a custom ringtone and what it was. Like, did you use, like, a, an anime opening, you know, or something for your ringtone? I have no idea. Maybe, like, an anime sound effect for a text message? I don't know. I've always wanted to do it. I just never have. And the reason being is because, one, a little bit lazy. Two, my phone's always on silent. So, it wouldn't really affect anything. <laughs> but, yeah, it's always something I've wanted to do, though, especially as a kid. Making sure her stuff is neatly put away and foregoing her inspection of it, we head out. While Natsuki and I walk along this surprisingly clean concrete sidewalk, we commissioned phone... My commissioned phone vibrates in my pocket. Yo, I really love the lighting effect right here. This looks beautiful. Like, I literally could just use this as a thumbnail for a video. Damn! Looks good, man! Natsuki looks at me curiously as I pull my phone out and answer the incoming call. Uh, hello? Rar, I'm going to be heading to the field office tonight to question Williams. I want you to come with me to personally observe. <sighs> Julia wants me to come down to the office after what happened last night. Big red flag. I'm not comfortable at all heading down there, given the circumstances. Yeah, if you missed the other episodes, uh, we almost got murdered. Five men came into our house. We killed them. And we think Julia might have been up to no good. Specifically because, like, the outfits they were wearing meant that, um, the only person that could have sent them is, like, a commissioner office assistant or something, which this girl Julia is. She's, like, a secretary of sorts that works with us. We do some kind of special op stuff. I don't really know. It's all shrouded in mystery. That's all I've gotten from, like, the 24 episodes of this mod so far. <laughs> but yeah. So we think Julia might have tried to murder us. Which is why we are a little curious, a little questioning, if we should really meet her. I'm not quite sure I'm able to trust Julia that much. This could be a trap. <clears throat> I'll just have to navigate this carefully. I was gonna make a stupid joke about how, like, Natsuki's a trap. You guys have all seen, like, that picture online where it's, like, it, they, like, measure Natsuki's body proportions, her chest, her hips, and, and, and at the top it says, like, final answer, obviously a trap. Natsuki's not a trap, bitch, okay? And even if she was, I would still give her all the love that she deserves. I'll just have to navigate this carefully. When? Uh, when are you free? I'm um, walking Natsuki home right now. After that, would be fine. Dude, why would we tell her that we're walking Natsuki home right now? Now she knows we're involved with her. No good. I don't know, man. If we don't trust her, I feel like we should have never told her that. All right, call me when that's done. Will do. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. End of the call, I can practically feel Natsuki's burning questions scalding me. Who is that? Another fucking whore that you've been talking to on the side, Rar? N whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, 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 okay. No! No. No. <laughs> it was Julia. She runs a few errands with me for a little while. She, she wants to run a few errands with me for a little while. Oh, that sounds boring. She's not gonna ask who Julia is? That's obviously a girl's name, dude. Not to be like, you know, not to gender names, but, you know, you one would think. It sure, it should be. It's sure to be. 
Thank God you have me around. Oh? Why is that? <sighs> Dummy, you shouldn't ask a girl why she says something like that. Sometimes the cool guys have some pretty cool girls with them, you know? Did you just inadvertently call me cool? Shut up, I'm trying to compliment you. Alright. My apologies. You do make me dreary. You, <laughs> you do make my dreary and dull life much more bearable. Natsuki giggles and keeps her pace alongside me. I take a second to watch her from the corner of my eye. This girl brings out some emotions that are an immense struggle to suppress. But the situation with her father, I don't know, brings out a whole new side of me. Such a sweet, beautiful, innocent girl, being dealt a bad hand at cards like I have. I won't let her become like me. That's a promise I can make myself. Natsuki and I stopped slightly before her house. We decided that it would probably be best for me to stay out of sight while she's walking up the sidewalk, just in case her dad is home. She was extremely against it at first, but later came to understand why. About three houses down from her as I looked down the sidewalk to make sure Natsuki's father has no ability to see me. Uh, Alright, this is my stop, I'm afraid. Well, today was fun. I enjoyed myself. I'm glad you did. I had fun too. <clears throat> Thanks for helping with the doors, by the way. Don't mention it. <laughs> Thanks for walking home with me. Natsuki and I trade hugs quickly. No problem at all. Stay safe, okay? I will. See you tomorrow. Natsuki winks at me and starts to walk home. Turning around, I walk away. All right, well, so far, so good. I don't like that there's a million question marks there, though. Oh, are we going to get a gross flashback? Oh. Dude, I hate these. I understand that MC was abused. Uh, all right, here we go. Guys, cover your ears and eyes for a minute or two. Well, you don't need to cover your eyes. There's It's just a black screen, but, you know, I think we're going to hear some, some messed up shit about what happened to MC when he was a kid. For at least a couple minutes. <clears throat> I dropped to my knees, coughing profusely. You're gonna stay down there from now on. Talk back again and you'll get another punch to the stomach. Do you understand me? I can barely breathe. I can't stop coughing. <laughs> Father once again punches me in the middle of the stomach. His fist is so huge that it makes contact with the majority of my stomach. Beating me as forcefully as a hammer. Oh no. I'm gonna throw up. Unable to control my body, I feel the bile rush up my throat and out through my mouth. All over father. Through the blinding darkness in my basement, I can practically see the burning fury in his eyes. My blood runs cold. He grabs onto my hair and pulls me up by it. I'm just barely hanging off the ground. The blows to my stomach sent pain coursing through my body, swiftly weakening me. This was a brand new outfit and you soiled it. Thanks, kid. He slaps me and simultaneously releases me, sending me crashing to the ground. My left cheekbone stings as if it's broken. My already darkened vision seemingly grows darker to a black that's not even, that not even light can penetrate. The pain is just too much. It hurts. I didn't mean to throw up on you. Every breath I take makes it harder for me to stay conscious. I can make myself, I can feel myself falling asleep. Jeez, man, was that necessary? I heard that from upstairs. Don't worry about it. He decided to ruin my clothes. You made sure not to hit him in the kidneys or the bladder, right? We really can't afford him piss and blood for the tests. It'll screw up the results. You think I'm that stupid? No, sir. Stop questioning me then, especially about my son. What I do with him is my business and mine alone. I understand. I'll be upstairs when you need me. I'll go up there right now. We can finish up. I like they're at least quick, but man, just, uh, just get to the point already, man. I don't want to see MC suffer. I don't want to see this stuff, man. It's just sad. We know, we know he lived a bad life and we see who he is now. 
Let's just make sure Natsuki doesn't have to experience that much longer. Oh shit, we're meeting Julia. Julia meets me outside of my house. The headlights of her car illuminated the street. The moon above us just barely lights up the land with an eerie blue glow. During the drive to the office, Julia gives me a rundown of what's planned for the night. Alright, so I'm gonna be checking in with the medical wing. From there, I'm going to guide you from the, to the observation room so you can watch um, from behind one-way glass. That'll prevent the agent I'm questioning from panicking at the sight of you. What are you planning on asking him? Just the usual interrogatory, inter interrogatory questions. Close enough. <laughs> you know why he was deployed, who sent him, who his CEO was, etc. Oh, am I... Uh, I'm also going to need to take your gun. Hell no. I look at Julia with, furrow, with furrowed eyebrows. You do understand that bringing weapons in the medical ring, wing is strictly prohibited, right? I'm still not fully clean, keen on coming here with you, and you're going to be taking my most valuable means of defense. You'll be fine, I promise. Very hesitantly, I place my gun at the center console of Julia's car. <clears throat> Alright. Julia and I walk through the medical wing. The sound of our footsteps reverberating give a already eerie atmosphere more depth. While we travel through the clean hallway, I look into various rooms we pass. Say what you want about hospitals. I hate them a lot. I definitely hate being here more than anything. Being around my own company isn't that bad because I'm used to them. But the medical wing, the medical bays and wings that are set up by my company, it's a whole new ordeal. Not to mention I'm potentially in the den of my enemies. Go in here, quickly. Julia points to an unmarked access control door. She badges me in and keeps walking forward. I open the door and walk inside to find a darkened room with a single way window on the north wall. It sits completely pitch black, indicating that it's not been enabled yet. I take a minute to look around the room and notice a plastic table and several metallic chairs folded against the wall. Looks like this room hasn't been used for a while, or everything was neatly put away in preparation for my arrival. I grab one of the metal foldable chairs in the room and position it in a comfortable position before sitting down. Leaning forward, I press a button and the window immediately tr uh, turns transparent to reveal the hospital room on the other side. Julia stands off to the side, scrolling through her phone while leaning against the wall. Inside the room is a medical, uh, a hospital bed covered in a privacy curtain. Covering my arm, or crossing my arms, I keep my eyes focused on Julia in the room. After a minute, I get a text. I'm gonna start now. Are you ready? I quickly send a response and lean back into the chair. Julia walks over to the curtain and calls out to the agent. Williams, we need to talk. She opens the curtain and reveals what's behind it. The agent lies in the bed, completely motionless and pale. Around his neck is a dark and discolored line. Son of a bitch. He was garroted? A surge of caution goes through me and I immediately stand up, knocking my chair over. Julia looks around the hospital room and back to the window. Son of a bitch. This means I quickly get at the door, open it. Before my chance to fully get away, Julia runs after me. I quickly and calmly get to the front desk, check out before Julia has the chance to interrupt and exit the front doors of the office. Beating up my pace down the stairs, I try to get much distance away as I can from Julia. Realizing I no longer have my handgun, I act as calmly as possible around the other people wandering through campus. When I reach the middle of the parking lot, Julia calls out behind me. Roar! I turn around and watch her run up to me. I prepare myself in case she attacks and raise my hand slightly. You need to keep your distance from me, Julia. Roar, I know this looks bad. You're damn right it looks bad. Tell me the truth, Julia. Did you bring me here to take me in? What? No! She tries to step forward by a simultaneously step back to equal the distance from her. My trust in you was shaky at first, but now it's... I trail off my sentence and Julia looks back at me disheartened. It doesn't look good for you right now. I get that, but you have to understand that this is a surprise to me too. Julia, no offense, but so far you failed to regain my trust. To, again, I don't fully understand what's happening here, and I don't want to interject too much, but I don't really know why 
her exposing a dead body to us like that would be like a part of her plans. Do you know what I mean? I fully believe and trust that she had no idea that he was going to be dead. Anyway, let's continue. How can I? It's not easy to gain it in the first place. Julia, you're the only person here who has the ability to send a team after me. You're the only one. Uh, you are one of the only people who could have contacted... Who would have had contact with the surviving agent and our only hope of information. Oh, I see. But if he was working with her, I don't know why he would reveal information anyway. But still, yeah, I mean, he was pretty much our only source of info besides, I guess, Julia. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we're kind of at a loss. I'm looking out for myself here, and right now I can't trust you. How am I to know that you aren't uh, that you aren't feeling this to take me in? I, I, I don't know what that word is. Sorry. Rar, I don't want anything to happen to you. Why do you think I'm trying my best in this? To cover your own ass. You mean so much to me, Rar. I wouldn't do or allow anything to happen to you. I've always had your back, and I will still continue to. Julia pleads with me as she walks over to me. I stand my ground and quickly contemplate what I'm going to do. Julia does sound genuine. But it's still hard for me to trust this situation. Rar, if I wanted to bring you in, I would have just came straight out with it and told you. I don't like beating around the bush. Give me my gun back. I'm going home. You take care of the mess in there. Julia reluctantly nods and walks to her car. After retrieving my gun from the center console, she places the firearm in my hand. To show her that I won't harm her, I release the magazine and pull the back, uh, pull the back slide, emptying the round. We take the bus home. You have fun here. I turn my back from her and walk away while she remains silent. Toe club room. Whoa! I don't even. I don't even know what to say. We have not been in the club room in like 10 episodes over probably an hour and a half to two hours, maybe even like two and a half. Oh man, it's such like a juxtaposition. Like some, whenever we get into like really deep shit, they always like pull us immediately into like, oh, everything's good now. And I'm like, but I feel like shit. <laughs> oh man. Um. Oh gosh. Um. Okay, I'm sorry to do this to you guys. I know that I've been trying to do longer episodes, but I feel like how the hell am I not supposed to end it here? We're going, you know what? Oh, oh, but we could continue. We could, we could. We're gonna continue. But if it takes too long, we'll end it here. Still in the club room. Maybe we'll share poems. We'll share like a poem with Siori, like the good old days. And then we'll wait for the next part to do Natsuki. I don't know. Let's go. I hope nobody left. They'll probably notice if there's like 10 minutes left in the video that I'm not actually ending yet. <laughs> or maybe they think I'm gonna ramble for 10 minutes and not actually do anything else and just leave and sit on this page forever. Who knows? They're like, oh my gosh, there goes Rar. He said he's ending the episode. There's 10 minutes left. He's self-advertising for 10 hours or 10 minutes straight. He's telling them to check out the Twitch channel. He's telling them to subscribe. He's telling them to turn the bell notification on. They're, he's telling them to comment. He's telling them to do everything for 10 minutes. Come on, Rar. I thought you were better than that. Okay, this is overdone. But at the same time, check out my Twitch channel if you haven't. Link right down in the description. And do everything I said. You probably should if you enjoy my content. If you don't, you can, like, dislike the video and do nothing and leave. I mean, I get it. Everyone has their own taste. Whatever. But anyway, let's continue. Closing the club room door behind me, I look around the room and spot both Monica and Yuri. Rar, you're here early. Yeah, did you guys get everything ready? Fe festival! 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 Festival day! Is it festival day? Of course. Monica and I brought stuff from home today. Perfect. Uh, thank you, girls. Both of them nod happily. I slide my backpack strap off my arm and place it on one of the nearby desks. I unzip it and retrieve a few items I stashed away. While Yuri and Monica examine what I brought, uh, I look around the room for Siori. Is Siori out? Oh. Jesus Christ, where is Siori, bro? Is Siori already out? 
Yeah, she's going to the lockers with Natsuki. Oh, she's here. Thank God. Perfect. All of this looks so good, I'm kind of envious. <laughs> this might actually make for a good social event for the club. I'll keep that in mind for the future. Alright, so uh, let me take a look at all this. Rook and Yuri grab some plastic containers from their desks, and Yuri's uh, gingerly placing them down next to mine. I open up all the containers and start to combine them. And in no time at all, everyone in the club has contributed to a bento box for Natsuki. It's still not the fa- When is the festival? I don't understand. Again, like 18 episodes ago, they're like, remember, the festival's in three days. I swear it's been more than three. <laughs> okay, they didn't say three days, but they said it was coming soon. And like at, at that day, it was Friday, and I believe the festival takes place on Monday in Canon DDLC, but maybe we actually had a week and two days? Anyway, cute, very cute. We all made a bento box for Natsuki. How freaking cute. We're all contributing. We can all afford it. It's a beautiful thing. So the door in the club, uh, the door in the club room, the door in the club room opens and closes, revealing Natsuki and Siori. Natsuki looks at us curiously and Siori beams brighter than the sun. When the girls and I discussed last night over text. Siori seemed especially excited, however... She only brought yogurt, because we can't trust her to cook. <laughs> okay. Guys, guys, I got the yogurt! I even made sure it was, like, um, a Greek yogurt, and it's strawberry! Natsuki has to like strawberry, because she has pink hair! <laughs> yes, Yuri, yes! Apparently, she nearly burned her house down once by just boiling water. I... I don't even know how you do that. Nonetheless, we're still grateful she pitched in and helped. When all of us, uh, when all of us make a group effort for Natsuki, it shows her that we're here for her and we do care about her. Plus, her father's feeding her less and less, and we can't allow her to suffer. Surprise! What is this? Natsuki rests her hand on her hips and looks at the bento box. Is that for me? Yup, we all decided to do something special for you. She looks at me, and I can see a glimmer of concern in her eyes. Thank you, guys. She walks over to the box and opens it, the aroma of ingredients wafting through the club room. Wow, this smells really good. I walk over to her and wrap my arms around her shoulders. Oh, little PDA in front of the dokies? It's great! They all seem fine that we're in a relationship. Natsuki doesn't want to die. Monica's not breaking the game. Yori's not slicing herself. Oh, it's going great, man. Things are going good. She looks up at me. Meanwhile, like, we're about to get murdered by some kind of special ops, uh, uh, thing. But that's fine. You know, it's all good. Um... She looks at me and tries to hide her smile. Leaning my head down to her, I whisper into my ear. Into her ear. I whisper into my ear. Psst. You deserve a good meal. All of us wanted to help, so don't feel bad. She tilts her head and whispers back into my ear. I know. I appreciate it a lot. Thanks. Next, I feel a little peck on my cheek. Oh my god! Nazi quickly turns her head and hides her face from me. Yuri and Yuri look somewhere else and didn't see what just happened, but Monica did. She giggles to herself silently while staring directly at me. I don't know what you're laughing about over there, Monica. Nothing happened. What? No, I was laughing at Rar. Uh, why? Me? me? Monica leans forward and softens her voice. Your face turns so red. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my god, did it? The sudden attack on me made me extremely self-conscious. <laughs> Am I really blushing? No, 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 that can't be right. I don't blush. Natsuki faces me again and her mouth immediately forms a devilish smirk. Oh my god, Monica's right. Natsuki starts to giggle, to giggle to herself as she looks at me. Fine, fine. You got me. I need to get a little blood pumping anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and there's blood pumping in other places as well, Natsuki. I mean, what did you expect when you pecked? to be on the cheek <laughs> all right you two uh you two enough with the couple stuff <sighs> huh we have to start the club now all of us gather to our normal desks and start yet another afternoon at the literature club and with that i think we will actually end the episode here 
Um, I want to start the episode on like good vibes. You know what I mean? This, uh, um, uh, what's it called? This mod is going between like happy good time vibes, really sad depressing vibes, like constantly. It's like a 50 50, and we're just banking back and forth constantly. I like to start the episodes on a good note at least, so uh, I will end it here. I already told you guys to like, comment, subscribe, turn the bell notification on to make sure you don't miss the next episode. I post every day. You know what it is. I got the Twitch channel. I don't need to say it anymore. Thank you for coming by today, guys. Hopefully I'll see you all tomorrow. Much love. Take care and have a damn good one.